Hey guys, I hope you're good. Today I have a plan. I think I'm ready to take the training wheels off and take my boat out on my own. After all, that was the whole point of getting a boat, was to get me more independence and be able to just get up and go whenever the whim took me. So the plan is, have my neighbour come with me just to keep an eye in case anything goes wrong, but I'm to do all of the work myself. But, like all of my great plans, it's not happening. Yep, that is not my boat. Once we get ourselves turned round, I'll tell you what happened. Where are we going? We shouldn't be down here. So I spent all morning tidying up the boat, getting everything ready for a cruise, and then my engine wouldn't start. It didn't matter what I tried, it just did not want to start. Now, I'm not saying that it's anybody's fault, but all I will say is that it used to start just fine until that lovely chap from Cruising the Cut had a fiddle about with it. Anyway, rather than waste a good day, I've come out with my neighbour on his boat and here we are now just waiting to go through City Mill Lock. And here's something that you don't see every day. We met this lovely chap in his canoe. Our plan for today is to cruise up the Limehouse Cut to Limehouse and to grab a drink in a pub there. So we made it through the lock without any dramas, which is quite unusual, and we're heading now to Limehouse. That boat on the left hand side, that belongs to the CRT, and I have no idea how this guy on the right has moored up. It's a bank holiday weekend here and it is sweltering. The weather app said that it was 26 degrees but in the full sunshine it felt so much hotter. Um, being a bank holiday and the weather being so good I'm sure that we're going to meet lots of other boats along the way. Here's the first one, it's a little yoghurt pot and there's like what five, six people in there? I'm surprised it's still able to float. So we're just coming up to Bolocks, which is officially where the Limehouse Cut begins and it runs for two miles to the Limehouse Basin which connects to the River Thames. Before the Limehouse Cut opened in 1769, the only way that you could get from the River Lee to the Thames was to go along the Bowback Rivers into Bow Creek, which is where Bowlocks are now and then follow that down to the Thames. It was really time consuming and relied on the times of the tide. So it just made loads of sense to build this canal as a shortcut. John Smeaton was the engineer responsible for the Act of Parliament, which paved the way for the creation of the Limehouse Cut. I wonder if he realized that 250 years later, people like us would be using it to take their narrow boats down the pub. I wonder also if you realised how much weed there would be in the water. It actually looks really nice today, but only a few days ago it was just like a carpet of green.
for anyone who hasn't seen the video of the first time I took this boat out, you really should check it out because this is no ordinary boat. It's got a three and a half litre truck engine inside there. So that's why I have to have my concentrating face on whilst I'm at the tiller. Actually, I'm so used to driving it now. Um, I don't find it difficult at all. Really, really enjoy it. So as with any engineering project, there were a few teething problems before the Limehouse cut could open. There was a bridge collapse and a lot of the brickwork wasn't ready and also someone miscalculated the measurements for the Thames lock. But once all that was sorted out, it saw a steady increase in traffic. Oh, once this boat goes past, I want to show you something. There is a residential mooring just here on the left hand side. And um, this is the first time I've seen any of the boats not there, so it seems that everybody's out for the bank holiday. Anyway, back to the history lesson. When the canal first opened, it was only wide enough for one barge, and eventually they put a passing place in, and then the whole Limehouse cut was widened and operational from 1777. From all of the boats that are moored here now, maybe they'll need to widen it again in the future. This little boat here has the most beautiful roof garden but I would get a little bit concerned mooring all on my own. At least they're close to the bridge I suppose. It's not the easiest place to moor because the towpath there is concrete. But that's something I really love about this part of London. Even amongst all of the concrete and the traffic, look how green it still is and the water is beautiful here. You see so many dragonflies here and lots of birds and you'll see bees in all of the plants as well and this morning I saw the most massive fish outside my boat. I am so so lucky that this is the life that I'm living. I can't imagine going back now. Just on the other side of this bridge is another dinky little boat. I think it's really cute, but I would be a bit scared to use it. And on the bridge over the head is the Docklands Light Railway, which means we are very almost in Limehouse. As you can see, it's very busy at the moment, and lots of people are double moored, even on this really tight, almost blind bend which is a silly, silly thing to do. The boat that we're on today is 60 foot, which is not massively long, and we didn't make it round the bend in one go. So if you don't want a little kiss from another narrow boat, perhaps don't double more on a bend. And just to make things even more exciting, there was a canoe coming round the corner. We saw lots of first-time canoeists today and a lot of higher narrowboats 
so even though we gave them lots of blasts of the horn sometimes it was still a bit difficult to get out of each other's way on time. The situation in the basin itself was no better so I'm not going to show you how we moored up. What I'll show you instead is this, the Kent 1948 working tugboat usually based at Chatham. I could watch this all day but there's a large cranberry juice with my name on it in the pub. This here is just on the wrong side of the lock onto the Thames. Today is perfect boating weather and look how scary it is. I hope you enjoyed today's journey. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Join me again next time where you'll see the journey back, which was even more beautiful than today. Bye for now.